I want to end our, our speaking portion just with some rays of hope, which are two, two of our residents. Um, again, we attract the best and the brightest to Lawrence um, because of this residency. And so I'm just going to ask Vanessa and uh, Laura Beth to come on up and just, just kind of talk a little bit about why, why you chose to come to Lawrence and, and why you chose primary care despite all the graphs I was showing before. Good morning. Um, my name is Laura Beth Chamberlain. I am a third year resident, so in my third and final year of training. Um, as Joe said, I am from Massachusetts, born, raised here, went to the public uh, medical school, um, and hopefully hope to stay and work in Massachusetts. Um, going into primary care was an easy decision for me, but deciding how to get that training was a little bit harder. Um, I think there's a lot of pressures to go to a go into a specialty to go into other more lucrative um, professions as um, Joe is saying um, I had a decision how to get to primary care whether to go to an internal medicine training or go to a family medicine training and I'm very happy I chose family medicine um, I think it has provided me a much broader base I've been trained in the community, in the population that I would like to serve instead of in the hospital. Um, managing ICU events is not really what I want to do. I want to deal with the real world problems in a community setting. Um, so I think my decision to train at Lawrence and to train in family medicine is going to really give me the skills I need to be a practicing family doctor and not burn out in five years. Um, and I think really the main reason I chose Lawrence and chose family medicine here is because of the community of people that is so dedicated to caring um, for an underserved community. And, I, and it's hard to really speak to that, um, but in so many other places, the residents care for the underserved population and the attendings care for their private patients. And here that is absolutely not the case. Everyone is dedicated to the mission. Everyone's dedicated in, to teaching family doctors like myself to care for this population. Um, and I have so many wonderful mentors that are doing the same thing that I hope to do, that haven't burned out, that have energy, that um, want to teach me how to provide excellent, excellent care to everyone, um, whether um, you're poor or whether you're rich. And I think that has been really important to me and I plan to stay in Massachusetts. I plan to um, keep working with this population because I think now I will have gained the skills to do that, to not burn out, um, to feel fulfilled um, in that career path. So, thank you. Thanks, Claire. That's hard to follow, Laura Beth. So, <laughs> hi everyone, I'm Vanessa Cortez. I'm also a resident, I'm a second year, so I have, I'm have following in um, other great people's steps as well. Uh, in terms of why I chose family medicine, why I'm here, for me it also was an easy decision uh, for, uh, for a couple of reasons. One is that I really enjoy taking care of everyone, as we say, from cradle to grave. I don't like to just take care of people who have pain in their arm or have just diabetes. I like taking care of uh, people as a whole um, and people from the moment that they're born or before they're born as I'm taking care of the pregnant mom um, until they are on their deathbed and hope to help them and their family actually um, make the most reasonable and peaceful decisions when, when that time comes. Um, the other part of that is that in terms of taking care and being a generalist and taking care of, of a, a large community, uh, the, the other thing that family medicine specifically provides, which is important to me, is that it provides care in a big, in, in the greater uh, perspective of not just physical care, but also we really do have, and as Jeff and, and John Laura Beth have talked about, the uh, uh, biopsychosocial model. We recognize that patients, people don't live in a vacuum. Uh, a patient is a person who lives within 
a family within a community and within just greater groups and everything without, within them and around them affects their health and their care as well. Um, so family medicine allows me to, to partake and to serve the community in, in this way and to me that's, that's amazing. Um, in terms of why Lawrence, so I am um, originally, I grew up in Puerto Rico and uh, have been a little bit of everywhere in terms of states. I, as Joe said, went to uh, University of Pittsburgh in terms of medical school. Uh, found out about this very unique residency and already knowing that I wanted to go into family medicine, found out that there is this place here, Greater Lawrence Family Health Center, who is based in a community, uh, a community that happens to be predominantly uh, of Caribbean, Hispanic, uh, Puerto Rican, Dominican um, backgrounds. And so to me it feels like this is the closest I get to really serving and giving back to my community without going back to the island, which is, which is fantastic. Um, and, uh, and a really special thing is that the community health center, it, it really is everybody there is very invested in the community. Everyone from the, the medical assistants and to, to the pharmacists to the social workers to everyone really who works with us. We do work as a group uh, and it, it, the health center itself uh, employs people from the community so that it really is very, very embedded. We are part of the community. We don't just, we're not just uh, top to bottom, I guess, which what you were saying, we're not just uh, a, a different group of people coming in and saying, "Oh, this is what we can do for you." We are, we are, um, we are the community as well. So, this is uh, essentially why I'm here and why I'm hoping I can also uh, stay and serve the community for a long time. Thanks for this. So, I think we need more people like that, uh, you know, for our healthcare system, and we need we need more support so that we can train and uh, people like that and keep them in Massachusetts. So uh, I think we got a couple of minutes for questions. Uh, I, I also just uh, be happy to stay after if anybody has questions. Again, be happy to share any of the PowerPoint slides or data with anyone uh, if you find it helpful. So any questions at all? Any things that weren't, wasn't clear? <laughs> uh, I just want to leave you folks with uh, uh, with one thought, and uh, it's a more practical thought of uh, what this residency saves the Commonwealth in terms of health care expansions. These are my own calculations, but if you look at the number of our folks that have graduated from our residency program and have stayed in Massachusetts, and if you just run the numbers, the number of patients in, a, in the average panel and the average savings, we save $140 million a year in health care expenditures in Massachusetts. I think that's pretty incredible. I mean, despite all of the positive health outcomes and the quality of life issues that we have uh, helped improve with our patients, that's pretty amazing. And yet, you know, the funding is going in the, in the wrong direction. And unfortunately, you know, uh, we have some hard choices to make uh, in the future and hopefully uh, the leaders in Massachusetts and, uh, and uh, at the federal level will recognize that that, the, that funding is a real issue and that, that would help restore that. So it's, I don't want to leave you on a negative. But they, yeah. Yeah, thanks, um, hi, David Jersey State Representative. Also, uh, high cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've had the uh, pleasure to represent Lawrence for seven terms now, and uh, I can't think of too many other organizations in Lawrence that uh, give me greater pride, um, you know, when I come to the city and talk about uh, some of the great things that are happening in Lawrence. Many of you guys know that uh, Lawrence is not always portrayed in the best light, um, in the Boston media especially, and it's just nice to come to a place like this and you see the great work. Um, and I really appreciate the work that you, Joe, um, and Bob do on a, on a, on a daily basis. Um, and Laura Beth and Vanessa, thank you very much for sharing that, uh, and Dr. Geller as well. Um, what we can do at, this, at, at, the, at the state level um, is basically try to restore the money that we took away a few years back. Um, everybody knows we've been going through a tough uh, recession over the last couple of years. 
the last 48 hours. I don't know if we're going up or down. I have no idea what's going to happen next. But I am very bullish on uh, the state economy. Uh, I am very hopeful that we're going to restore some programs we cut over the last couple of years. Um, I know Council of Two News with us from Lawrence. He knows firsthand that uh, we've got cuts at the local level that affect public safety, police, and fire. Um, and obviously, it's affected you folks as well. Um, the commitment I made to Joe and Bob um, was trying to restore that funding. Um, hopefully, this upcoming fiscal year, we're going to do that. Um, I do have a commitment from the chairman of Ways and Means, Brian Dempsey, who works on April, uh, to come here next month, hopefully September or October, um, and hear your story, because it is a compelling story. It's one that um, we better take notice of, because uh, we're going to be uh, really hurting ourselves in the long run. Um, you know, everyone's always talking about health care and how much, more, how much we're spending, but it's clear to me, and I hope it's, it's clear to, I know it's clear to Congressman Saunders and, and Senator Scott Brown that uh, we're spending it the wrong way. So. Uh, I'm going to make that commitment to try to, to restore. I think it was a million dollar earmark a few years back, and, and hopefully we'll restore that. And, uh, it's the least we can do at this point. So uh, thank you for your time today. Thanks, Dave. So I got 9.30, so do you want me to close it, or do you want to close? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have the rehearsal. Uh, so I just I really appreciate everybody's coming. I, I, I hope we gave some people some food for thought. Um, it's a message that doesn't get out there as much as it needs to. Um, if there's any way we can be clearer in the message or, or express it in a, in a way that people can, can take it to the bank and, and, and take actions, then please let me know, give me that feedback. But um, I am very, very proud to be here and it's just, it's a joy to work with people like, like these guys and, and our whole physician complement and our nurse practitioners, our staff. We, we, we've been focusing a little bit on the, do on the doctors today, but we also have just tremendous, tremendous staff that work for this health center, um, and they're part of Lawrence as well. So, so again, I really appreciate everybody's uh, coming today, and um, please uh, you think of me as a resource down the road. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank you.